everyone, welcome back. So this is your general elective 3C course entitled uh, Technical Writing. So as stated in the introduction part of this course, we will be covering module number one for this particular video. So today, we will be talking about module number one entitled Nature and Essentials of Technical Communication. Again, I am Engineer Junaika Eta Piador. I will be your instructor throughout the half of this trimester. So for today's um, topic learning outcomes, so at the end of this particular module, you should be able then to define technical writing discuss the importance of technical writing as a whole and specifically in the field of study, explain the basics of oral and written technical communication, and differentiate literary, literary texts from technical texts. So we will be covering three topics for this module. The very first one is the definition of technical writing. So we have the first definition here where it says that technical writing continues to be highly coveted skill in the professional workplace. Demand is expected to grow 10% from 2014 to 2024. This is faster than the average for all occupation. Later on, when you are already working in an industry, you will be discovering that most of the things that you would do is actually your reports and such. And in saying so, technical writing has always been an important skill in the industry. I know this firsthand as when I already applied for a job, the very first thing that I did is to actually write minutes of meeting, write letters to certain uh, industry, and uh, draft memorandums. So as, you, as I have already experienced firsthand, it is very important that you know how to write uh, a letter especially. And hopefully, by the end of this particular course, you would be uh, enhancing your technical writing skills. So what is technical writing? Another definition or the traditional definition of technical writing is technical writing is the practice of documenting processes such as software manuals or instructional materials. Traditionally, it was limited to user manuals of some sort. So before, when you say technical writing, you are to um, write instructional materials for certain machine, how to use them, how to take care of those machines, and such. Frankly, this definition has become outdated. Technology moves quickly and lexicographers are often left playing catch-up. So today, technical writing encompasses all documentation of complex technical processes. It also includes reports, executive summary statements, briefs. Anytime technical information is conveyed in writing at work, it is by definition technical writing. The format is no longer bound to lengthy user manuals. Technical information must be distilled and presented unambiguously. This can come in the form of technical reports, emails, policy, briefs, and press releases. The bottom line is, if you work in a technical field, you are most likely performing technical writing. Uh, that's why it's very important to you to hone your technical writing skills, especially nowadays, since um, most often than not, students tend to send messages or emails to their instructor without really knowing how to properly address 
his or her uh, teacher or professor. So you should uh, enhance or hone your technical writing skills, especially, sorry, let me go back, especially when you are writing emails, kasi most of the time, uh, you tend to write an email in the vernacular or in Tagalog, which is, if you try to dig deep, very unprofessional and inappropriate. So let's go to the second topic, significance of technical writing. Uh, hopefully, when you already know the significance of technical writing, you get to appreciate why it is important. So as you can see here, as a future technical professional, you will have many opportunities to perform many functions. This will include research, design, analyze, manufacture, manage, test, or construct. In the performance of the stated functions, many technologists, engineers, and scientists new to the work environment discover that they spend as much as 50% of their time writing reports and documents that discuss the result of their work. So as I already uh, mentioned earlier, my first-hand experience was that you are to be writing a lot of technical reports and it's important that you can convey those information to um, non-technical people so it's important that you may be able then to use um, layman's term or layman's words in order for your supervisors to understand what it is that you are writing about so it says here, as a future professional, you are expected to write communication and report to serve different purpose and audience. So as I already stated earlier, uh, the people who will be reading your reports may be or may not be a professional in your field. So the last part of this module is uh, the basics of oral and written technical communication. So what is the difference between oral communications and written communications? So let's dig deep first on what oral communication means. So transmission of orders, messages, information, or suggestions through spoken words is called oral or sometimes it's also referred to as your verbal communication. It is effective for communication in meetings, conferences, gatherings, group discussions, interviews, face-to-face -face talks, telephonic talks, etc. So whenever you actually speak or use words to convey your messages, that is considered oral communication. Another uh, term or another definition of your oral communication is that it is a direct and informed method of communication. A personal contact is established in such, in such communication. So it is useful in motivating people. It is very much flexible in nature. It is speedy, economic, and suitable for confidential and emergent talks. How about written communication? So it says here, a written communication means the sending of messages, order, or instructions in writing through letters, circulars, manuals, reports, telegrams, office memos, bulletin, bulletins, etc. It is a formal method of communication and is less flexible. A written documentation preserved properly becomes a permanent record for future reference reference or references. So as you can see, um, it actually serves as an evidence. So it also says here, it can also be used as legal evidence. So as I've already mentioned that earlier, it is time consuming, costly, and unsuitable for confidential and emergent communication. This is very obvious, uh, especially now that, of course, diba, um, you can experience this firsthand when you are, for example, communicating via, uh, via messenger. 
So, um, of course, you are typing the things that you are trying then to say. And if the person on the other hand uh, took a screenshot of the conversation that you had, then of course, that's already considered as evidence. And they already have um, certain things that you already said before as an evidence that they may be use, uh, they can use against you in the future. Another one is written communication to be effective should be clear, complete, concise, correct, and courteous. This, is, this should be true, clear, complete, concise, correct, and courteous, especially if you are writing emails to your supervisors and even to your subordinates. Because um, written communication is easily, uh, what they call this, is easily mis misinterpreted if you do not uh, if you are not writing in a clear complete concise correct and courteous manner so this will be your first activity just uh just create a short video introduction about yourself by answering the question why did you choose your pro program so uh, I will be requiring that this will be a two-minute video presentation, okay? Additional instructions will be provided to you in the Canvas Announcements and Assignments tab. So I think that's it for today. The next topic that we will be having, uh, the next meeting is about module number two. So uh, please stay home, stay healthy, and stay safe. Goodbye, class.